Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a captive portal. I'm gonna show you the basics of a captive portal so you can just have one up and running. And then I'm gonna also show you how to you do user authentication with PFSense um, so you have a little extra security when it comes to using your captive portal. Um, in this case being, we are using PFSense 2.45 or 2.44. This will be the same exact way. And on the newest one at 2.5, which was released, this will also work as well. Um, if you do not have this set up here, you do not need this setup to do what I'm doing today, but it will help you um, to follow along. So if you haven't done this already, watch my previous video on how to set all this up for you so you can keep following along. We're also going to need a second um, VM. So I went ahead and made a Raspberry Pi OS VM using Debian. Uh, it was a very simple and quick install, so I made it nice and perfect. And we're going to use this to test the captive portals. We're going to show the captive portal on our DMZ, which doesn't require user authentication. And then I'm going to show you the second one where it requires user authentication and how it works. Okay, so we're going to do the first one is going to be non-user authentication. So you need to go ahead and log into your PFSense. So let's go down here. Okay, now that we're all logged into our PFSense here. We're going to go over to services, captive portal, click add, call this whatever you need to. Um, in my case being, I'm just going to call it DMZ portal, captive portal for the DMZ. We're going to go ahead and enable this. Interface will be DMZ. Um, now everything, I'm not going to go through everything on here, just kind of the basics to get you going. Um, for this version and the second one, we're going to do the same exact thing. But if you want to go further in detail, you can always look at NetGate's website um, and their documentation. It, it breaks down everything here step by step if you want to pretty much just fill everything out here for whatever reason being. But for my case being, maximum concurrent will be 25, I'll say. Um, you can make this as much as you need to as long as your DHCP server allows. So mine on this DMZ allows 100 users only. You know, so right now I'm kind of cutting it back here. So if I want, I can do a full 100. Or just to make sure it doesn't give me an error. Because sometimes it will give you an error if you, go, if you do the same number. I'm just going to do 99. All right, I'm not going to do any idle timeouts, no traffic shaping, nothing. No re reset periods or anything. So we're just going to keep scrolling on down here. And then we get down to the terms and conditions, which I actually have a, give me a second here, a quick little template. And pretty much the terms and conditions are just letting the customer or the person that's logging to the system know exactly what you're doing and you're not messing around that. If they do something on here or try to cause any problems to your network, you're gonna you know, pursue them with a full legal actions. Right? And with anything that you allow other people on your outside to connect to, even like with DMZ and free internet, always put something like that on here. Um, because again, if you ever have to go into any kind of court situation or any kind of criminal you know, investigation, having this here pretty much will save you in a lot of situations. Um, again, this is not a you know, definitive one, but nonetheless, always have some form of terms and conditions on your captive portal. So then we go down to authentication method and we're going to don't use authenticate. And then go to hit save. Perfect. Just wanna go ahead and click this again, just to make sure enabled. There's a description, DMZ. Okay. And then down here, it says, don't forget to enable DHCP server on the captive portal interface. The interface that we're using is DMZ. So if you've followed my videos in the past, you've already done this, but if you haven't, I'll go ahead and give you the quick run to it. Click DHCP server, click your, your interface name, mine's DMZ, and then go ahead and add enable DHCP server. And then you'll need to fill out the range if you have not done that yet, you can also provide DNS servers. So I'll go ahead and do that with this, just to add. Gateways, if you wanna add a specific domain name, a lot of things in here, but we're not gonna go over this because we did this kind of already. All right. So now the DHCP captive portal should be up and running. So let's go ahead and check. Everything seems to be good. Go ahead and just recheck. Wait for that to finish refreshing. Okay, so now we're gonna hop over to our little Raspberry Pi here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump onto this. And if I go to google.com, 
And you just give it a minute or two. It's, uh, depending on how fast your network is, the system is, and your DNS is running, um, this could take a minute or two. So I want to just try to log into google.com just so that we can see the message pop up. Okay, as you can see here, we have our very, let me just go and blow up this screen. So here's our login. So we went to Google, it checked the internet, it says you are connected to the internet, but it says, uh, we don't allow you. So all I have to do is click terms and conditions here, and you can see here's all the terms and conditions we copied over. You can make this much nicer than I did, change it up a little bit. This is just, again, just for the video's sake. All right, so you have to click I agree, click login, and it was made with love by NetGate. And there you go, you are connected. As you can see here, Google is now working. YouTube.com, now working, looking beautiful. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So if you just wanna make a very basic captive portal just so that people know how you can log into this and see everything, you know, that's all it's, that's required. All right, so let me just go back over here. Let me actually minimize this. And we'll go back down to here. All right. And then we're going to go over to services, captive portal. Click on here. Now we have a, a separate area here. All right, you have your logo images, your background images. Now, um, what this will be doing here is your background image is just going to change the color of the background. Um, the logo just changes that actual PFSense logo to anything else. If you're looking for a full custom setup, um, you would definitely want to go ahead and run the use custom captive portal page. And that will give you pretty much a whole different setup. Um, let me see here if I actually have one of them ready to go. Downloads. So here will be one of our captive portals that I I've seen, so we're just gonna go here. So here will be a, a custom captive portal. All right, background's different, username, password, um, obviously license, terms and agreements ain't gonna work because it doesn't actually function, and see the logo. So this is actually what we would do, a, consider a, a custom captive portal. And there's actually plenty of websites on the internet that will show you how to do this. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going through that because I'm not a graphic design artist. All right. So I'll go ahead and save. Now that's just the captive portal right now we have for the DMZ. Now we gotta make another one. Let's go ahead and make another one. Let's call it uh, remote users. We'll just say uh, remote user portal for LAN two. Sounds good enough for me. Call it whatever makes you happy. LAN two, maximum again, we'll do again 99, all right. Timeout time because this is probably for actual real business scenario. I do not want any timeout times um, or any hard timeouts. Uh, idle timeouts, I probably will put for 20 minutes. Right? Actually, if you're in a live environment, you probably want to do about five. So when the person gets up, walks away, and they're still connected without disconnecting from it, in five minutes it'll boot them, which is what we really want. All right. Then we have enable logout popout window. Again, this is just a preference. Disable concurrent user login, so you cannot log in over and over and over again as the same user, or the or one user will be disconnected. All right, and then you know what? Just for this, I'm just going to use a custom background. There's my little wallpaper. Okay, my terms and conditions. Got to copy them bad boys over here. Look at that. Now here we're going to use use an authentication backend. Now you have to click on this. If you don't click on it, it's going to pretend you never actually selected a server, which I don't understand why it's only one. Okay, then we have here a secondary authentication server. I don't touch it. I leave it blank. I'll have a second one. If you do, you would want to pick your second one. And then you have this one, which reauthenticate connected users every minute, which is a nightmare to do. Um, and then you have the allow only users slash groups with captive portal login privilege set. This I would l recommend leaving connected, especially if you're going to have multiple people. Say you got 20 users that are using your PFSense, all got 20 logins, but you only want two or three people to actually be able to, I guess, log in via the captive portal setup to, to the network, your remote users. All right? 
you don't want anybody who doesn't have the Captive Pro login privilege set to be able to do this. So I'm gonna leave that checked, hit save, and there you go, I got two of them now. This is getting crazy. So now we're gonna go over here to stat, um, actually no, we're gonna just go ahead to here to users, go over to groups, add a group. I'm just gonna call it Captive Portal, local, and call Captive Portal Users, Okay, and then from here, I'm going to add these two. I never want to add admin. I don't want admin to be able to log into anything. Okay, now that I add the users, I got to go back here to actions because I got to add the privilege. So over here in filter, just type in CAP. And then right here, user services captive portal login. This has to be in there. If it's not, then you're not going to be able to log in. Okay, and honestly, I'll give you, I'll show you that in a little bit. We'll try to log in as admin and you'll get the error message. Okay. So we're all looking pretty good here. We don't have to add anything. If you want, you can always add an extra captive portal user um, to it, but we're not gonna do it that way. So we're gonna go here to status, the captive portal, DMZ, and there's still some things. I wanna disconnect them. So if I go back down to here, I've been booted, which is fine. I'm going to turn power this off completely and we're going to go ahead and switch over to our LAN 2 and turn this back on. And as you can see here, remote users are nothing. Perfect. So we go here, cap to portal again. Just want to make sure take a quick look. Okay. Now when we go back down to here, let's go ahead and make this much bigger. Okay, let's see here. 172.16.3.100, that looks about like it should be correct. Portal. So I'm gonna go to youtube.com and I'm just gonna give it a minute to pick up. Okay, so sometimes it can take a couple minutes depending on how your DNS server is. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and try to, to log in. Now, as I said before, we're gonna, first we're gonna try to do is log in as admin. Now this one is not on our list, so it should not allow us in because it doesn't meet that requirement. But let's go ahead and see if I meet that requirement. Always have to agree, here's your terms and conditions, my little wallpaper background. Log in. And there we go. So now if I go to google.com and we're good to go. And that's it. You know, that's all it actually takes for you to go ahead and make a very quick captive portal ready to go and it will go ahead and log your users. So let's go ahead and click here. Go back over to status, captive portal, remote users, and there you go. So it shows their start session, last activity, MAC address that they're using, what IP address is pulling, and the username. So that's everything it takes to pretty much, like I said, make a very basic captive portal. Um, I will try in the future to make an SSL HTTPS version of the captive portal setup for most users. Um, but for this video here, I just kind of want to get something up and running um, for a few people who just want the very basics. Like this will be done internally. Um, so you wouldn't actually be broadcasting this at all outside of your business or anywhere else in the world. Um, this will just all be done locally and very easily. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I hope somebody learned something and I will catch you guys on the next one.